Good evening, Celebration City. It's so good to see all of you. And Val is already gone, so he started without us. Uh, but we're going to join him soon. Um, John 7.38 says that if you believe, out of your inner being, rivers of living water will flow. He took the, he took your cold, what is it, heart of stone. <laughs> I don't even know anymore. <laughs> um, where am I? Uh, he took the heart of stone and he gave you a new one and a new spirit. And from that place, from the spirit, that's where the river of life flows. And as we worship him, as we give praise to the Father, and he's all about the life in abundance. That's what he does. And as he as he pours that life from him that comes from his spirit just direct that life either in any circumstance situation um over portland anywhere the spirit leads you to do it just do it and um so let's do that let's praise the father amen
above all names You are Lord We sing and praise And lift you up our King We are
things and work together for my good. And you make all things work together for my good. You stand the same through the ages. Your love never changes. So, uh, if you think about the love of God, the love of the Father is the unconditional love. So just say, I receive your unconditional love, Father. I receive that. Ah, Father is so awesome. If you can imagine the best time when you felt love or you thought love in your life, this is a million times more. The Father loves you. Thank you, Father. If you think about Jesus, <laughs> if you love me, you keep my commandments. The love of Jesus makes you want his word, want to do his word, want to keep his word to death. 
That's love. You love him. Yes, that's the love of Jesus. You love me. You give everything because I give everything for you. Just say, I receive your love, Jesus. Receive your love, Jesus. And the love of the Holy Spirit, it's a passionate love. It's a fire. It burns on the inside because you belong to one, to the beloved. You have eyes only for the beloved. That's the passionate fire of the Holy Spirit. So say, I receive your fire. Holy Spirit, your love is like a fire. I receive that. The Father loves me. Jesus loves me. The Holy Spirit loves me. Oh, it's such a perfect love. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just worship Him for a minute. And then we'll flow back into the worship. Yes. Worship, worship the Father. Worship God. He enclosed you into His love. He made you out of love. It's Him. Thank you, Father. We worship you, Father. Praise you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So good. Thank you, Lord. Don't wanna linger 
from the past Just wanna reach to the real you inside Get unbelief and rejection Leave the things that separate Build up a trust that we can stand on I'd like to get to know you well I'd like to get to know you well I'd like to get to know you well For we are made one, we are made one together I would like to get to know you well I'd like to get to know you well I'd like to get to know you well For we are made one, we are made one together
There's nothing I can separate my heart from your great love. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Was really, really good. It's always good, right? We go from glory to glory, from fate to fate. And um, yeah, and we're here in the, fir- in the perfect place. And you're there watching us, one with us. And um, I was thinking about 
eternal life. It came to me, um, two women approached me and asked me uh, if I'm worried and if I'm fearful for my life, what happens afterwards if I ever thought of it when I die? And I said, I'm never going to die because I have eternal life. And one was shocked. <laughs> yeah, she was, she was shocked. And um, the other one said, wow, that's really powerful. Uh, so they said, I hope we meet again one day. And um, you know, Jesus said that, believe unto me and I'll give you eternal life. And what is eternal life? It's knowing God. Jesus came to give us that relationship with the Father, to know Him, not know of Him or hear of Him, but to personally have that intimate relationship with Him. And uh, David said in Psalms, like, when I am, when I awaken, I'm awakened and satisfied into His likeness. So we are born of him, and once we are born of him, as he is, so are we. Yeah. And um, that's that's what we right. It's by faith. Everything. It doesn't say if you have this feeling, I'll give you eternal life, or if you have this emotion, you know, because feelings, emotions, part of the soul. And but we are led by the spirit and by faith living faith where we find it in the word because he's the word and the word became flesh and it was jesus and um it, it's just so powerful the word for me it's in the fate of his fate you know and that never fails a couple of nights ago i got hit with the migraine so bad that i i told them i said even if my head is going to explode i'm not going to take a pill for me it's either by your stripes I'm healed in the cross, or nothing else, period. The word is the truth, it is the life, and it came the verse that they, um, they overcame by the uh, blood of the lamb and the words of their testimony, and they did not love their life unto death. And um, that's what we are. That's who we are, we're the sons of God. We manifest the eternal life. Everywhere you go, that life goes out. And nobody's safe from that eternal life. If there's any testimonies. No? Okay. Um. <laughs> what you do? Time's up. <laughs> you may come. <laughs> more maybe some more testimonies if i start i'm not sure if that's just because um for the last 40 some years i'm walking into a very amazing place with the lord but the word that he gives me for you is don't be afraid to be too spiritual Maybe younger generation has a problem with that. It's like, oh, no, I'm I'm cool. I'm I'm okay, you know, I'm not too too there, you know. Don't be afraid to be too spiritual. Well, you spiritualize everything. You know, that's uh you know, that's kind of is this true? So <clears throat> I realized that the the prince of the world, um, the one that was defeated by Jesus his power is in this um, mind conviction that nothing quite matters. You're not quite making a big change. And no matter how much you try, you're going to be like your parents, like your grandparents, like some other people that tried. And what happened to them? Look at them. They're still trying. <laughs> It tries to throw like a shadow on all the reality that the Holy Spirit in the truth it brings to you. 
I almost see that reality and I see kind of a shadow that kind of floats around it to make your eyes not very clear in what they see. The only way to penetrate that is to be too spiritual. <laughs> is to be who God says you are. In the days when you are not very sure and you are kind of hovering in between the shadow and reality, that's the day when you have to be too spiritual. You have to stand on the truth. And the shadow will leave you. <laughs> because the shadow has no substance. This is something that um, it comes in and sometimes the blood of Jesus, just thinking of the blood of Jesus, it brings the substance of the spiritual extremely real and dissolves the shadows. Do not let this world and the prince of the world tell you how you are and what's actually happening in the world. Do not let it dictate your future. Be too spiritual. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So let me read your verse 1 Peter 1 13. Therefore, Gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sonship Training Center. Guys, <laughs> do, do not miss next time, because now you cannot come in. So this week I was sick three days, three nights. Um, it started Monday morning. I was feeling a little bit not not good. <laughs> so, but in the night I was so bad. So, gird up the loins of your mind. That helped me, and that explanation that you focus on the word. So, by His stripes I am healed. So, I stood on this word. I cannot tell you. Um, how many thoughts came and say, because I knew how to treat what I had. I knew how to do, how pills to take everything. I knew if I take them, then it's gonna leave. But I said, no, if the word of my father is not worthy as a pill, then, then whatever, I, I, no. I said, no, I'm gonna stand. So the first night I slept fitfully, I think two or three hours. The day was okay, but then the second night it was so bad that midnight my husband came and <laughs> find me in the bathroom and she said, do you want me to take you to the emergency room? I said, no. <laughs> but you're not gonna be able to work tomorrow. I don't know, but no. So I went to bed and I, you know, when you focus not on the pain, which was, uh, when you focus your mind on the world, the pain is somehow bearable. It's like, I don't know. So the second night, I was able to, to sleep maybe five hours. And then the day came, and in the, the third night, again, and I said, no, because God gives me the patience and endurance. And then I had fever all three nights, but the third night was better. And now it's gone. And yeah. praise the Lord, because... It was, it was an increase of faith and truth and trust in my father. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, and uh, we know that we are more than overcomer. And um, because we know the end from the beginning. And every time we have one of these um, victories, we do impart into the body, yeah. you know, because we're not just alone. We do it for the whole body. 
every victory, every healing, everything, we uh, give it to the rest of the body. And um, okay, so we have one announcement, which is um, the women's ladies, women, ladies, same thing. Uh, sons. So ladies fellowship, which is Saturday, June 15th, 11 a.m. till 3 p.m. Um, Roxy's number is there. So if you want to come, contact her. I know it says June 1st, but what is time anyway? Or date or outside of time. So do show up. It's going to be a blessed time and um, you'll be increased. And you'll be happy that you did come. Next one will be Claude. For those who can discern the words without sound, I wasn't cussing. Um, <coughs> it says, if two agree to ask for one thing, it will it would be given to them by the Father. That's what it says in the scripture. If two come into an agreement and both their minds are on the same direction, he says the Father will grant them what, whatever they ask for. The reason why we come into one mind, one accord for these words around the world, uh, at least uh, those people who, who understand that they are sons, is because these words cover, I would say, the whole spectrum of a Christian life, let me put it that way. Bring souls home. You reveal, they are being revealed that they are sons. Miracles and healings, they are dealing with the problems in the, in the flesh. Increase of the dominion of life, situations, jobs, everywhere you move, your family, your relatives. Grace and favor mul multiply to you everywhere you go. It's a no for everybody else. When you get there, they make an exception for you. Right? We give with joy for the kingdom. We're going to get into that a little bit later. And the mountain of lack is removed. It's not lacking money necessarily only. It's lack of peace, lack of joy, lack of knowledge, lack of I don't know how to do, what, how to do my job. It's a lack. You have a lack in that situation. Um, <coughs> so let's get into one mind, one accord, and let's say these words together. Father, we thank you for souls being saved the sons of god revealed miracles and healing in abundance increase of the dominion of life grace and favor multiply to us we give with joy for the kingdom the mountain of lack is removed we give and we receive um val is gonna do the thing <coughs> so uh, if you have physical cash checks and you give with joy, with joy for the kingdom take the basket with joy if you have physical plastic cards click by faith on the website where it says uh, tithe donate and uh don't be shy. Let me put it that way. Um, okay, so, uh, Father, we thank you for everything that was given in faith. And uh, it was given bountifully, and they are going to re, re bountifully. We speak 100 fold return this year on everything we've sown. Thank you, Father. All right. Uh, <coughs> as a. As a. As an individual, let me put it that way, soul, my soul speaking about, my soul. I was pretty faithful, faithful since I was a kid. I was trained that way by my dad, 
my phys- my earthly dad. He was really like, if you started it, just finish it or kapow, right? Um, so I got pretty faithful in everything I've done. When it when it when it comes to money, I didn't know a bunch a, a lot of time. I'd, for a long time, I didn't know how to deal with the money. I was always, always, always in lack, not having enough. And um, when I got to the truth in Celebration City, the Lord started dealing with me with money and explaining to me how these these covenants work and how to put them in practice. And I started doing that. And I saw that I got two months when I made uh, even quite ten times a regular salary. And I was like, whoa, that was such an increase. So I saw the, the covenants working on the ground. Then the Lord had to deal with another issue when it, came to, when it comes to money. And I didn't know about this. I was speaking the right words. I was saying them rightly. But uh, they were not alive in me. So I'm going to uh, touch a little bit on that subject tonight. <coughs> we say that everything we have comes from the Father. Right? So let me give you an example. So let's say I have a checking account ending in one, two, three, four. Right? A checking account, mine, on my name, Claude. And I give you my checking account and I say, in this checking account, you have $10,000. They, they belong to me. The checking account is on my name. This is uh, the card. Make a $2,000 payment right there. Give to celebration $3,000. Pay that person five thousand, and I got what? What? And that's it, right? So two thousand dollars right there. Celebration three thousand, and pay that person five thousand dollars. For you, it wouldn't be a problem. Oh, for that person, I go online to blah 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 dot com, and I pay it. Celebrationcity.net, and I do that three thousand dollars with, and the person is paying with my card. He doesn't have a problem. The person doesn't have an issue. Now, the person, let's say the person's name is George, right? Let's say the person's name is George, and George has a checking account ending in four, five, six, seven. Right? And George has ten thousand dollars in his checking account. And I say, I tell George, you got ten thousand dollars in your checking account on your name ending in two, three, four, five, or four, five, six, seven. Now you pay two thousand here, three thousand there, and five thousand there. Is George gonna do that? No. Why? Who am I to tell him what to do with his money? I can tell him what to do with my money. He doesn't have a problem paying with my money, right? But with his money, I cannot control that. Right? Clear? Simple? We go to work for a month, right? We work whatever we do. We get 20 bucks an hour, 30, 40 some of us like 200, right? So let's say you get a bunch of, <laughs> you, you pay, you, you get like, let's say 5K, $5,000 a month. And you think I worked for it. I sweated for it. I woke up every morning at 5 in the morning. I got home at 7. I worked for it. It's mine. And yes, I give to the Lord. Whatever, 10%, 12, 13, right? So this is what I did. This is what I thought. I thought, it is my money. Everything belongs to the Lord. But it is my money because I worked for it day and night. And I give the Lord his his part, a tithe. This is what I thought. Everything was worked just fine. And then when I was like, Lord, I want to I I go over this. Everything was fine. I got everything was paid. Everything was clean. No, no debt, no nothing. I was like, like, but barely making it. Yeah, even if you make 15K a month, you can have expenses for 14K, 879, right? And some change. So I was left over like 20, 30 bucks, 100 bucks, 150. From 15K to only have like $100 over your bills and everything, that's like... And it happened to me for a long time. I was like, Lord, something is not right. I want to I wanna get it. What's, what, what the heck is going on? I am blessed. I've never made this much money in my entire life. I made $1,500, $2,000, $2,500, but 15 k or 13 k or 
I never, I've never made that much. And even doing this, I'm always breaking almost even at the end of the, all the expenses. Like, I, I gotta, there was something I'm not getting. There was something I'm not getting. From that time on, we started, but we took it seriously. Like, we started praying about it and framing it every day. Open our eyes to see what we're doing wrong, what's what, what we're not getting. What aren't we getting? Uh, <coughs> of course, payments added up and the income didn't come as much and we were extremely faithful with the tithing to the dot. We never took from it. It was always we take the tithe and give it to the Lord. That's his deal. That's his part. And I'm faithful to do that, right? So I we've done that. Man, we got into debt like there was no tomorrow. Bills piled up and late three months for that and four months late for that and six months for this and Every single day we got like 7 to 12 phone calls from all these places. This is uh, an attempt to collect, right? Uh, so we, we just, like Lord, open our eyes to see. So one day I was reading this, this passage in the scripture. <coughs> I know it's uh, a little bit small. But, uh, oh well, next time I'll make a beer, hopefully. And Jesus is speaking here. Talking to his disciples. All right? Those people who were trained by him. He was not talking to everybody else right then. You take it seriously, let me tell you something. He also said to his disciples, there was a certain rich man who had a steward. Steward means, not steward, eh? our brother. Steward means you are the manager of somebody else's funds. They are not your funds. They are not your money. You got hired as a manager to manage somebody else's accounts. Right? A rich man had a steward. And an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. What happened, this steward would steal the money from his master. Not all of it, because that would have been really obvious. It would be like here and there, here and there. He would like put it in his, in his pocket, spending it for his own purposes, right? So the rich man called him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. Right? Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. In other words, he's saying, I'm guilty. This dude is going to do what he said because I'm, I'm guilty. I cannot prove him wrong. Right? He's going to take his stewardship away from me. I cannot dig. I am ashamed to beg. I have resolved what to do. That when I'm put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his master's debtors to him and said to the first one. We, we, we're only given two examples right here. But I want you to see something. You know? He called the debtors. That means, let's say, in our money, like, let's say $100,000, right? So he said to the first one, how much do you owe my master? And he said, a hundred measures of oil, a hundred thousand dollars. So this steward said to him, take your bill and sit down and quickly write fifty thousand dollars. In other way, in other words, I'm going to sign it officially for you on the papers that you only owe fifty thousand dollars legally. So I'm giving you fifty thousand dollars. So he, this guy was still stealing. It was not his money. He was still stealing from the guy. But this time, instead of putting it in, in his pocket, he gave it away. This is what changed. He gave it away. And he said, then he said to another, how much do you owe? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat, let's say a hundred thousand dollars. 
And he said to him, take your bill and write 80,000. So he gave the guy, the second guy, $20,000. He gave the first guy $50,000. Instead of putting him in his pocket, he gave them 50,000 and 20,000, right? And uh, so he said that, so the master commanded the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly. Shrewdly? Shrewdly? Shrewdly. Commanded means like, wow, that was really good. Something like that. That was really good. Wow, that was smart. Eh? Commanded. He, d- he didn't get mad. But he said, wow, that was really well done. Now, <coughs> for the sons of this world are more shrewd, shrewd than the, these gener- their generation and than the sons of the light. Right? Now, now let's go to what Jesus explains. I'm not going to get into every single detail because I'm, I'm targeting a few points here. And I say to you, make friends for yourself by unri- unrighteous mammon. Mammon is the old English for money. By unrighteous money. Why do you mean unrighteous? I worked for it. I worked for it. I woke up at 5 and I got home at 7. What do you mean unrighteous? I didn't steal it. Right? That when you fail, when you die, they may receive you into an everlasting home. And now he's saying these famous words. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. Why is he talking about this here? Oh, he's talking about money. He who is faithful in money is faithful in everything else that's more than money. Money is the least, the least, the, l- the smaller level you start with the Lord. Now, I want to show you something before I continue reading. So let's say this is one foot in length, right? Let's say, let's pretend. So I, I want to I wanna, I wanna put seven feet, and I start measuring on a table, right? And I start one, two. And I go really, really precise, three. And I do seven, right? At the end, it's like seven feet. This is one foot. I got seven feet. I measured it. I, I was really, really precise. And now I get that thing, tape measure, right? And I start from the beginning. What do you mean five and a half? I put seven. What was the problem? This was not right. This was wrong. You know what the devil does? You know the measurement of the devil is this. You got to trust the Lord with your salvation first. All right? You receive the Lord, you get saved. You got to trust the Lord with your health. You got to trust the Lord with your kids, with your family, with your wife, with your job, with everything else. And then we get to the money section. You put everything, you do everything that's right according to the measurement given by the devil. And then you look at the end, it's like, I'm not getting the right result. Why? The measurement is messed up. The Lord's measurement is we start with the money and then we go with the rest. A, a guy comes to Jesus like, what should I do to be saved, to, to have eternal life? Legit question, salvation, right? What should I do to have eternal life? Well, do this, this, keep the commandments. I've done this. Okay, now let me get deeper. Sell everything you've got. Put your trust in me. Give it to the poor and follow me. Ooh. The guy left because he was really rich because his trust was in the money, right? And Jesus says a famous w- word. It is impossible for a rich man to enter the kingdom. He doesn't say it's really possible, but harder. It is impossible. And the, the disciples like that, like, who can then be saved? And says, with the men, it's absolutely impossible because they don't trust me with the least. They don't even trust me with the money. How can they trust me with salvation? 
or health or family or kids. They don't trust me with their money. He said, with the human beings, it is impossible because they trust their possessions more than they trust me. With them, it's impossible. So I'm making this deal and I make it possible for them even though they mess it up. But the heart of the father is you get the right measurement. You start with the money. So let's keep going. He who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, in the unrighteous money, I worked for it. The Father calls it unrighteous. I deserved it. I worked for it. And the Father said, they are my, it's my account, and it's not yours. Even though you think you worked for it, and you deserve it, it is mine. And I'm telling you what to do with my money. So this had to change in my mind. All the time I thought, it's my money, I worked for it, I deserved it, and I have deserved it a lot more than this. Obviously, I'm, a good at what I'm good at what I'm doing, and I'm faithful, and blah, 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 blah. And I give the Lord his part. And the Father's like, it's not your money, it's never been your money. You're just a manager over my money. And I was saying these words, uh, the hills belong to him, he created everything, he's the Lord of all. The hills are mine, the, the sheep and the goats and whatever. There are verses in the scripture. I know I'm in Romanian by heart, but in English kind of hard. They, are, they all belong to me. What, what, what sacrifice can you bring me when all these are mine? And people are going, those are not yours. Those sheep belong to that shepherd who's my neighbor. And he, he has a business with those sheep. And the Lord is on now. They belong to me. What? What? So I got this right in my head. I was like, oh, so I'm just a manager over his money. So I made $10,000 this month. Actually, he has $10,000, and now he tells me what to do his, with his money. Oh, I got that right. Man, when I got it, that was like three months ago. Whoo. Man, that was ingrained into myself. I was like, oh, now I, now, now I get this. I'm just the manager over your money. They are not my money. Okay, so let's keep going. <coughs> and if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, because the money belongs to the Lord, is the Lord's money, who will give you what is your own? All right? So I got that right. Okay, I got that. Cool. And uh, the Lord took me somewhere else in the scripture. Man, I read this verse. And what happened? We put it on our wall. We put it on our wall. So for I printed it in uh, amplified version. And amplified, you know, as a bunch of words. And when you read amplified on this verse, you get lost into all those lines, and you miss the 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 the, the essence of this verse. <sighs> but I this I say: He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Okay? We know, right? You put three seeds, you don't expect 7,000 acres because you only put three seeds. So you expect 7,000 acres if you went on those 7,000 and put seeds, right? It, it makes sense. Good. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver, keyword. Okay, and now check this out. Look at the bold. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you may have an abundance for every good work, always having sufficiency in everything. The purpose is not always having sufficiency in all things. When I read it in Amplified, the purpose goes on that. Always in everything, having a sufficiency, so you don't lack anything, so you blah, 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 and having for every good work. Man, I was missing that. I was reading that verse, I think, for months. Like, Lord, what the heck? What the heck is going on? So I, I took it down, and I printed a New King James. This is a New King James. 
And when I got to the, to the parable with the steward, then the Lord showed me the wall with the verse. You know what the purpose for all the grace abound towards you is? That you always have an abundance for every good work, not for your payments and for your bills. Oh man, that changed in me. You always is able to make all grace abound towards you that you may have an abundance for every good work. Having all sufficiency in all things, that's a byproduct. That's not a purpose. Okay. Check this out. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may pay his bills. No, that he may have something to give him who has need. He doesn't say for him to pay. Well, the guy was stealing because he didn't have bread. He was stealing so he can feed his family and his kids. And the word says, you stole, steal no more. Just work with your hands to have enough to give, not to pay for your kids and for your bills. Man, uh, that got ingrained in us. Like, phew, we decided. Oh, man, we phew, was like, Lord, thank you. Thank you. We decided. Like, that was like three months ago. It was like, we, we got it. So from that time on, I said, we wake up in the morning. We could do websites or we do whatever work so we can get money and give it to the Lord. I don't wake up in the morning to have money to pay my bills. My bills are a byproduct. From the very first day, I saw something different. Uh, I think I have like almost eight accounts, like three banks. Every single one of them, the past, I would say, year, always having some negative. And, but I had months when I had negative in all eight Minus 1,200, minus 700 here, minus 900 there, minus 349 here. I went for to put gas in my car. I didn't have a, a, a single card that I can use and not get declined. I'm not joking. Eight cards to give to the guy. Can you try this? Can you try this? Can you try this? Because in the beginning, if for like a few months, they let you go. If you're a negative, they let you go in. It's 35 fee. They go, you can go into that, like on the card. But the bank that gets smarter after a while, and they're like, uh-uh. They, they get you the 35, but they don't let you use the car. From the moment we realized this and we decided, we work every single day so we can give. And then whatever's left, we pay the bills. From that moment on, we were not minus in any accounts. Somehow, in a few days, we got all to the zero. And a little bit over, we were still owing money for. I was behind with my car, like almost five payments on that white one, right? So I got a website. I got a two thousand five hundred dollars website. The guy's like, I can pay a front for the whole thing. Oh, praise the Lord, amen. <laughs> so uh, we decided on a percentage. Sephora and I, I was like, I wanted to go for like this is for the sake of teaching. You understand, right? For the sake of teaching. I was like, let's go for 50. We'll give 50% to the Lord. It's like, nah, too much. I don't have faith for that. I said, in the Old Testament, it says, tithes and offerings, when you put them together, is like one third. It's like 33%. And that's the old covenant. I said, I'm not going to go lower than that. We are in, we're working a better covenant now. I said, let's go for 35. Do you have faith for 35? She's like, yeah, 35, I'm good. Cool. So I got 35% from the 2,500, right? It comes up to, I got a little bit higher. So it came up to $1,000. We gave $1,000 to the Lord. Celebration in other places, right? With $1,000, I could have made, I was able to make with that uh, $1,000, if I would have made a payment for the car, that would have been three payments, right? But I gave to the Lord the $1,000, now I got left 1500 With 1500 when it's a dry ground and you put water, you don't see water anywhere. Everything goes, <laughs> right? 
So we didn't see anything from the 1500. We barely paid, or we paid the emergencies like electricity, internet, because there was like water. <laughs> One day you were like, no water, what the heck happened? Oh, oh, <laughs> okay. So we paid those emergencies and uh, the next day we're like, okay, so let's get somewhere. Let's, we wanted to go somewhere. When we get out, no white car on the driveway. Fudge. Someone stole it from us. No, nobody can steal it from us because we are protected. That's not right. Something's not right. Oh, man, we are behind with the payments. Let's call Kia. Oh, we took it from you. Five months behind. Duh. I would have taken it from me. So they took my car. You know what the first thought was? You had $1,000. You could have given just 10%, like before. You work for your family. You have to provide for your family. That was not wise for you as the head the of the household. I was like, no. I work to give. He gives me an, a, an abundance toward that I have an abundance for every good work. And then having all sufficiency. But I was like, Lord, something has to happen. Two weeks later, two weeks pass by. They sell your car in two weeks. They sell it in five to seven business days. I was two weeks later. Right? They, they give it to a place and they sell your car. That's what it, how it goes when you get a repo. So <coughs> I was like, Lord, something has to happen. You are not a liar. I was doing what the word says. I stay on the promise. Now the guy with the rent is like, I give you 24 more, 24 hours if you don't pay, you're out. Because you've been so late lately. I said, dude, I know. What can I do? That's true. So that happened in the morning. And we were praying. We were framing verses. And like, the Lord, some, I was like, I was expecting. Man, I was sure the word works. I was like, I'm going to die. I'm going to go in the street. I don't care. I'm going to go live with my sister. But I'm not going to give back on what he said here. He said, first to the Lord. Check this out. Um, honor the Lord with your possessions. Oh, I thought honoring the Lord is like, Lord, I surrender. I surrender it all. No, with your possessions. This is just blah, blah, blahing. This is not working with him. You get the right measurement. Mm -hmm. You trust the Lord, you start with the money. You don't trust the Lord, oh, you can blah, blah, blahing about, oh, I trust the Lord with my healing and with my blah, 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 and with my job. It's the wrong measurement. And with the first fruits of all your increase. And then he promises this, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with the wine, with new wine. I went back to Jesus' words. If he who is faithful in what is least in the money is faithful also in much. I knew this word. This is how the Lord calculates. He starts with the money. I was like, I don't give up. No, no, no way. If he kicks me out of the house, I don't, I don't care. But the word, pardon me, should be true. It is true. He doesn't lie. I was, ex man, I was expecting something to happen. A day before I bought a, a lottery ticket, I was expecting to win the lottery. So I bought a ticket, $2, that was the left, whatever I had in the account, $2. I had $2.89. But anyway, I used to. That was not wise, brother. I don't care. So I went and bought the, bought the ticket. Of course, it didn't win that time. But it's going to win, right, Manu? It didn't win that time. But I was expecting, anticipating something must happen. Something, it, I, don't, I don't care how. Something is going to happen. The word is not lying. Jesus is not lying, and I'm doing what he said. I'm being faithful with what he gave me so far. Maybe I'm missing something else, but at the right time, he's going to reveal it to me, and I'm going to get serious with it. <coughs> if I say this, you must drink this water in the next second. Do you believe me? Everybody, yeah, yeah. 
And I say, you're a bunch of liars. If you believed me, this water should have been drunk almost entirely by now. You know what Jesus says? Oh, you say you love me? You keep my words. You do what I'm saying. That's how, you s that's how you prove it to me that you love me. Oh, we love you, Father, so much. And but I told you to do this. Lord, we love you so much. It's not flying with him. But I, every time I talk about the Lord, I, 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 they don't mean nothing. The Lord is serious and he loves emotions. But they don't mean nothing to him. You love me, you prove it to me by listening to saying to doing what I'm saying. Okay? So we were faithful. So that day when the guy said twenty four more hours, in the evening, <coughs> a guy comes to us. <laughs> Funny. It's like the Lord told me you got debt. Yes, we did. How much? Oh, I don't know. Quite quite a few thousand tens of thousands of dollars quite a bunch. How much? I don't know, dude. It's like I was that and I was like I was calculating writing something down on paper. I said like this amount. It was like tens of thousands like big time, big number. He looks at me, he's like, all right. He takes out a check, he writes the whole amount and gives me the check. The Lord told me to tell you that this is for you to see that I'm not lying. And this is not a coming back of a seed. This is not the, re the, the, the harvest of a seed. This is just, just this section of the verse. Always having all sufficiency in all things. I paid all the debt. I took the car back exactly in the day they wanted to sell it. They give, just gave it back to me. It was a few hundred more, but that was fine. I was able to bless some people. I, bless, I was able to bless the rent guy who waited for us so many times. I was like, this, this is for you, dude, for your patience with us. Just be blessed. So I know for a fact he's keeping his word. He's not lying. Why am I telling you this? Because just <coughs> I wake up in the morning and I have to get to that stand. And on my walk, I make 2,000 steps, and I get here. The purpose of waking up in the morning is to get here, not to make the steps. The purpose of working is to have enough to give, not to pay all your bills. That's a byproduct. You have enough, you give to the Lord bountifully, as you purposed in your heart, and He's going to take care of your steps. And you made 2,000. You got here. That's how it works with him. I want to show you something <laughs> crazy in the scripture. <coughs> Give me a second. If you know the Old Testament, or at least if you've seen any video on YouTube about some story in the Old Testament, right? Because these days, <laughs> it was Elijah, 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 right? And this guy said, according to my word, it's not going to rain for three years. And then at my word, it's going to rain again. So it was a really, really dry season. Uh, and the Lord sent him somewhere. He said, go to that place. There is a widow, and I'm going to feed you there. The guy goes, and he finds the widow. She was, like, getting some wood. And it's like, uh, <coughs> Elijah is like, bring me some bread and some, some, uh, some water. And she's like, <laughs> so she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. Only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. I'm working to pay my bills. I'm working for my family to supply for my family. And then that's it. Look at the Lord. 
And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. What a jerk. What a freaking jerk. That poor lady, a widow, she barely had for one more meal and then both of them will die. And this guy's like, no, bring it to me first. What? What a jerk is the Lord. He wants my money first. The devil might say. Because this is what the Lord says. You give it to me first. And then you take care of your bills with whatever is left. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. <laughs> what a jerk. Well, check this out. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. What do you think she did? What do you think she did? She listened. And Jesus, when Jesus was here 2,000 years ago in the flesh, he mentioned her. Whoa, what was so important about her? Elijah had a bunch of situations, but the Lord mentioned this widow. So she went away and did according to the word. She obeyed the father of Elijah. And she and he and her household ate for many days. For almost three years, they had food. The bean of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord. What am I saying? You can say with your mouth, you trust the Lord. But if you don't trust the Lord with your money first, I'm telling you, you are a bunch of freaking liars. That's the measurement of the Lord. The measurement of the devil. Oh, you trust in the Lord with your salvation, with all these things, with your... And then with the money, if it's left over, if you have anything left over. And the Lord is like, no, it, that's not how it works with me. You start with the least, with the money. Trust me with your money that I am your provider. And then we grow from there. If you are faithful, you'll see. So we did that with the Lord. And I'm a living proof that it works and he's not a liar. My problem was I thought he was my money. And he said, now you are managing my money. The Lord said, you are just a manager. And I'm telling you what to do with my money. You either trust me or you don't. I know this is kind of rough. But we, it's, it's time to align some measurements in our lives. If you want to get the results, we see in the scripture. And this is a huge one because everybody in the body of Christ, they work to pay the bills. And the Lord was like, no, that's not how it works. Gentiles do that. They only work to pay the bills. You do not be like that. What does the body of Christ do? They only work to pay the bills. If something's left over, I'll give it to the Lord. And the Lord is like, you don't trust me. You're not going to see big things. You're going to struggle like everybody else. We don't want to struggle anymore. We want to see the Lord working. That's why we're talking about these things. So, uh, we'll continue with some more scripture on Sunday. But for now, it's enough. So, um, uh, unless you all have anything else, uh, let's give a, a, a spiritual tithing to the Lord. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for the life that was increased in us today. We give you a, a spiritual tithe of this. Thank you, Father. We know the devil cannot steal it from us. We know that you're going to pour more because we are faithful. And we give you a tithe from everything you've got. We've got. Thank you, Lord. We worship you with this. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. All right. Praise you, Jesus. We'll see you on Sunday morning for those who come or watch. Be blessed. Yeah.